I think the optimum timing of, of rehabilitation and the frequency uh, is highly individualized, and, and uh, that does make it difficult to be prescriptive. And, I, you know, again, from kind of the, the payer's point of view, I can see why they have difficulty with, you know, why does patient A, you know, with, who looks like they had pretty much the same injury as patient B, need so much more, uh, you know, therapy. <clears throat> But in fact, there's a great deal of diversity in, in outcomes after brain injury. And, and some people with moderate severe brain injuries walk out of the hospital and seem to be just fine. That's rare, but it happens. You know, whereas, you know, more typically people will need uh, a good deal of intervention uh, and rehabilitation over the course of their lifetime. Uh, there's a number of factors that go into, you know, what the, the timing of this. Uh, Perhaps one of the most important is the, the person's awareness of their disabilities. After a severe brain injury, people may, may not feel like they need any help, even though it's very obvious to their family that they're in a lot of trouble. So uh, uh, the, you know, the first job may be simply getting them on board in terms of recognizing their disabilities. <clears throat> you know, that kind of an intervention can be very intensive. Our, it may simply be keeping them engaged in some small way until they start to wrap their minds around what's happened to them. So again, it's, 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 a, it, it's a tricky business, you know, in knowing what, if, you know, what's right for a person at what time. And I, I think really hard to make generalities uh, that, that could go across a large number of patients.